Today, we are going to deepen our understanding of GraphQL by focusing on one of its core concepts, the GraphQL schema and its various data types. This knowledge is fundamental to effectively designing and implementing GraphQL APIs. A GraphQL schema serves as the foundation of a GraphQL API and will be scripted using Schema Definition Language or SDL. It describes the shape of your available data, defines a hierarchy of types with fields that are populated from your backend data stores. The schema also specifies exactly which queries and mutations are available for clients to execute. It's essentially a contract between the client and the server defining precisely how clients can access the data. The schema defines various types of objects that can be queried and their fields. GraphQL comes with a set of default scalar types that are int, float, string, boolean and a special type called id. Custom scalar types can also be defined for specific needs. Custom object types are like a user, a product or an account. When a client makes a query or a mutation request, the GraphQL server validates the request against the schema and executes it if the request is valid. The schema is also used for introspection enabling tools to fetch the schema and provide functionalities like auto-completion, validation and API documentation generation. Query type is a special object type that defines all the read or fetch operations that clients can execute. It's like the get request in RESTful APIs. The structure of a GraphQL schema is designed in such a way that there is typically a single root query which acts as the entry point for all read operations. Each field on the query type represents a specific piece of data or a particular operation the client can request. These fields can themselves be object types allowing for nested queries. In our schema, the query type clients returns a list of client objects. Notice the use of custom scalar type country code. We will discuss custom scalar type in a later chapter. The country field in client type is of country code type. This showcases GraphQL's ability to nest types and create a rich interconnected data structure. Mutation type is another special object type that defines all write or post operations like creating, updating or deleting data. It's similar to post, put, patch and delete in RESTful APIs. Just like query type, mutation is a collection of fields each representing a write operation. In our schema, the mutation field add client accepts an input of type client input and returns client type. Subscription type is used for setting up real-time subscriptions. Clients can subscribe to certain events to receive real-time updates. Enums or enumerations are a special kind of scalar that is restricted to a predefined set of values similar to enums in Java. In GraphQL, the distinction between input types and return types is essential. Input types are specially defined types that are used for passing arguments to queries and mutations. They are structured to encapsulate the data needed for a particular mutation or a query. On the other hand, return types define what a mutation or a query will return. It could be the modified object, a status or anything that the API consumer needs to conform to the operation's result. In GraphQL, the exclamation mark denotes non-nullable fields in the schema. When a field is marked with an exclamation mark, it signifies that the field is required and cannot be null. This is a powerful feature in GraphQL as it allows API designers to specify required data and ensure that 
clients can always expect certain fields to be present in the response. For example, defining a field as first name string exclamation guarantees that first name field will always have a non-null string value, preventing the potential for null related errors in client applications. Note that we have covered the basics of GraphQL schema definition and data types, but there are many more important concepts to explore. We have only scratched the surface. We will build on this foundation and cover all the essential concepts you need to master GraphQL schema definition and build robust APIs. Before we dive into GraphQL schema design and coding, let's talk about two essential GraphQL plugins for IntelliJ IDE that will enhance our development experience. 1. GraphQL plugin for IntelliJ provides syntax highlighting, auto completion, error detection, schema awareness, and integrated query testing directly within your IDE, making it easier to write, test, and debug GraphQL queries and schemas. 2. DGS IntelliJ plugin This plugin helps you to integrate and work with the Netflix DGS framework into your IntelliJ environment, further enhancing your GraphQL development capabilities. To install a plugin for IntelliJ, search for the plugin on the Marketplace tab and search for GraphQL. Once installed, you will need to restart the IntelliJ IDE to activate the plugin. 